Seven presents the high school football game of the week. Tonight from Memorial Stadium on the campus of A.L. Brown, it's the A.L. Brown Wonders of Kannapolis taking on the Raiders from South Rowan. A very pleasant good evening, everyone. Along with Woody Kane, I am Randy Whitley, and this is one of the bigger games that you'll have, especially the uh, second game of the season for Kannapolis, the third game for South Rowan. Kind of a throwback as far as a measuring stick is concerned. Back in the late 70s, early 80s, these teams were uh, even better than they are now, and uh, we had some great ones then. Huge rivalry indeed, Randy, but the key story coming into this game tonight is South Rowan hasn't been able to beat Kannapolis since 1994. Now, fans may remember last year that it was a track meet, 84 points scored in that game, so maybe we'll see more fireworks tonight. Well, both teams, you know, with uh, Coach Massey talking about the one-back set, and then you've got the wishbone, looks like we might have some ball control out there tonight. Well, you should, especially from South Rowan. As you mentioned, running the wishbone, they've got Keith Garrett and Tory Gertie. They're averaging somewhere in the neighborhood between them about 185 yards a game. Last week, uh, they did it again. They beat up on another West Rowan or a, a Rowan County rival after beating East Rowan. So they're getting it done on the ground. They also had three touchdown passes last week. Hey, people talk about this rivalry, Woody. They talk about it. Well, it's not as big as the Kannapolis Concord rivalry. But don't tell the folks from South Rowan that. No, as you can see behind us, they are here in force and making a bunch of noise. Should be fun. We've got, uh, uh, I guess, a measuring stick of how these teams are maybe going to react throughout the remainder of the 2000 campaign. We've got a lot more pregame ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back. to an overflow A.L. Brown Memorial Stadium. Kannapolis, South Rowan just moments away from the opening kickoff. What is the pulse of the coaches? Well, earlier Steve Gant had a chance to catch up with head coach Rick Van Hoy of the Raiders. Thanks, Randy. Rick, I don't have to tell you, you're facing a tough opponent tonight. Uh, of course, confidence is on your side and momentum's on your side. Well, like I said, we play well. We come in here 2-0, and and, and that's that's a big change over the last couple of years. And, and you know, Obviously, our kids feel good about the way we've played so far, but you're right. We play a great football team tonight. Well, I was looking back. You, you come into the game tonight 2-0. and I think this is about the third time you've come to Kannapolis 2-0 uh, and or 3-0, and and you walk out of here with a loss. 0-5 uh, oh against Kannapolis in your short career, South throw in. Well, that's true. And like I said, they've had some pretty good teams during that career. I think they played for a state championship and won a state championship. So, you know, and like I say, they're, they're a great program, and Ron's going to continue that tradition, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, we've got to work cut out for us. Coach, we talked to you Wednesday night on headliners. Uh, you've had a couple days of practice since then. How's the team health-wise? We're, we're okay. Everybody's healthy. We're, we're very fortunate in that regard. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be able to play everybody. And I talked to you just a minute ago off camera. Are you still undecided about your starting quarterback tonight? Well, both kids have done a great job, and, and they both bring us a little bit different dimension. Ricky's a little bit better runner, and Tim's a little bit better thrower. And, and we, sort of, we sort of let the flow of the game dictate which one of them plays the most, and uh, they've both done a great job so far. Rick, it's a warm, humid night. Uh, what's your thoughts? How you feeling? Well, you know, uh, you know, we 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 know we come in here. I feel we have a bit more confidence than we've had in a long time. Uh, that may not be enough. We've got to eliminate mistakes on our part. We can't have any big penalties and so forth, and hope that. Uh, Kannapolis team who doesn't normally make mistakes makes a couple for us. Well, you know, we talked about it. Kannapolis said don't make many mistakes. They are a good team. Uh, home field advantage uh, for them, uh, but it's a good rivalry. Uh, you, you know, Rowan County versus Cabarrus County. You guys are going to hit into playoffs uh, just a week down the road. Uh, looks like you're having a great season. Well, so far, so good. But like I say, night will be a pretty good measuring stick for us. Well, Rick, thanks for taking time out to talk to us. Get back to your team and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Okay, Randy, back to you. Well, that's the tone from the Raiders sideline. Ron Massey, obviously, the Wonders excited. Their home opener against one of their biggest arch rivals. And Steve Gant uh, caught up with Coach Massey. This is a uh, second game here as the Wonder head man. And uh, these were his comments just a few moments ago. Ron, I don't have to t uh, tell you this. It's probably the biggest game in the state tonight. <laughs> well, uh... It is for uh, A.L. Brown, I know that, uh, and uh, we hope we can give the fans something to uh, cheer about, and I think uh, South Rowan is a great football team, and it'll be a great football game. Well, they're coming here 2-0, the momentum's on their side, you know, it's, it's not often we see uh, South was as uh, good a team as they got this year, they're coming in here, like I say, the confidence levels is high, uh, of course yours is, you beat a good, stateful team a week ago. 
Well, you know, we, we made a lot of mistakes. I don't, you know, I, I wasn't real happy. We didn't play real well offensively, defensively. We played fairly well, but uh, South Carolina is for real. They've, uh, they've got a lot of confidence, a lot of things going well for them right now. And, uh, you know, I, you know, it, you know, I'm glad we're playing at our place, to be honest with you. Well, I can understand that, Ron. Uh, we talked to you on headliners Wednesday night. Uh, Health-wise, how's the team? We're in great shape. Uh, you know, we don't have any serious injuries that, to speak of. We've got a couple kids with some minor injuries, but that's to be expected this time of year. And, uh, you know, we're going to go out there, and I feel like, you know, we, we've worked hard to create some depth uh, offensively and defensively, so, you know, we feel like we're in pretty good shape physically. Ron, I got to ask you one question. For years, I talked to Bruce Harden, and for years, he done everything the same way. He's a very superstitious fella. Are you superstitious at all? Well, I'm superstitious, but I got to create some superstitions here. You know, <laughs> uh, we got to got to get some things going here. And um, you know, I, if uh, I don't know if if I believe if we have eight thousand people here, I might be the most nervous one here tonight. Well, at least I believe ten or twelve thousand here tonight. Ron, thanks for talking to us, and good luck to you. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate thank it. you. Okay, Randy, back to you. Okay, thanks, Steve. And as you see, uh, they, we're probably going to have that 8,000 figure and maybe uh, surpass that before uh, we get this one underway. The series began back in 1961, and uh, obviously South uh, has not won a lot of games in the series, but the most recent victory was in 1994. Some keys. First for the Raiders, Woody. Well, as we look at it there, pass protection is going to be job one for the Raiders tonight. They've got to be mainly concerned about Lee Basinger. The big defensive end had two sacks and a fumble recovery a week ago. Statesville could not block him. Ball control is a key as well for the Raiders. Canapolis forced six turnovers last week. For A.L. Brown, they need to get out to a fast start on offense. You know, they come in here the favored team. They've handled South Rowan well for the past five years as we documented. If South Rowan can stay in the game early, that confidence will grow and grow and it'll be a barn burner. Also, defense is going to have to stay at home for Canapolis tonight. South Rowan runs that wishbone. They've got Garrett and Gertie coming at you from all angles. Two different quarterbacks. A lot of different looks from that wishbone guys coming from a lot of different angles important for the defense to maintain their positions and fill their proper holes okay those are the keys and the most important key is they got to play it on the field and we're just about set for the opening coin toss and tonight's opening kickoff raiders and wonders coming up to Memorial Stadium. There you see the captains getting set for the coin toss and we'll take a visit right now. Hey, Captain. All right, man, introduce yourself. Good night, man. Let me introduce our other officials from that, okay, sir? Right behind the cameraman right there is Jake Sub. He's your umpire. Your line was Aaron Hooper. Your line judge is Jim Turner, and your back judge is Mark Weber, and I'm Ron Butler. We're going to call you white, we'll call you green, okay? I got a National Federation coin here. It says tails on that side, and that's the head. I'm going to ask you to call it while it's in there, and call it loud before we can both hear it, okay? Tails! Tails! Captain, it's a head, so this captain here wins because you can make your decision now, and your coach said you want to defer. Is that All correct? Right, right. I stand right there. All right, Captain, you want the ball, I'm sure, so. Okay. Uh, which goal would you like to fan green? Put your back down to the scoreboard, please. Right over here, Captain White. Good. Thank you. Good luck to you, man. That's it, man. So it'll be South Rowan with her hands on the football first after Canapolis defers the kickoff to the second half. As you see, Coach Rick Van Hoy in the Raiders' sidelines. Let's take a look at how things look personnel-wise on the field as we'll meet the uh, probable starting lineups here. Well, as you look here, the offensive line sheets, Eisenhower, Faggart, one of the captains, Van Weeren, and Lloyd along the offensive line. Childers, we believe, is going to get the start, although it might be Tim Cook. They split time and both will play. Garrett and Gertie, we mentioned in the pregame, they have had a spectacular season. Richie, Woodruff, and Pinion, the skill players. For A.L. Brown on the defensive line, McCoy, Turner, Lee Basinger is a force to be reckoned with there as well. The linebackers and defensive backs, McClure, White, Lipscomb, Anthony Collins, Fox and Brown uh, from A.L. Brown last week. Uh, among those guys, you had Gibson getting an interception. Brown got a fumble recovery. Uh, Fox had an interception. So the Wonders 
defensively have been generating a lot of turnovers, and this is a team you don't want to give any extra opportunities to. It will be Michael Anthony, the 6'1", 180-pound senior, kicking it away for the Wonders, as the fans have been waiting for this one, I guess, since last year, and it's always fun. Back deep, you've got Keith Garrett. He wears number 20. He will be on the near side, and then Tory Gurney on the far side in 24. There you see Anthony, and this one is about ready to get underway. The next millennium in this great rivalry between South Rowan and the A.L. Brown Wonders of Kannapolis. Well, I'll never forget that play last year, Randy. Uh, Michael Anthony in that scary situation in Northwest where he got hurt. That was just a wild game all the way around. Glad to see he's back at 100%. Ron Buckner, the head referee, set to give the signal to get this one underway. We think. <laughs> and here we go. End over red, and it will be Garrett at about the five-yard line. Good wedge, and Garrett with a good return out across the 30-yard line. That's where the Raiders will set up shot. Michael Anthony, ironically, the guy who kicked off, was there initially on the kick coverage. Now, how many times do you see the kicker do that and run down and make the tackle? Now, that's hustle. That's some speed. And it is going to be Childers, number five there, starting at quarterback. As Coach Van Hoy told Steve in the pregame show, he gives them a little bit better dimension in terms of running the ball, Cook a little bit better, pure passer. Out of the bone. Sorry, Randy, but Childers did have two TD passes a week ago. First play of scrimmage from the 32. They'll go to the halfback. Good hole up to about the 36-yard line. Lee Basinger, an outstanding defensive lineman for the Wonders, made the hit on number 20, Keith Garrett. And coming in now, shuttling the plays for South Rowan is going to be William Woodruff, one of the wide receivers. And, boy, Basinger really came into his own last year, Randy, and started to be just more and more impressive and absolutely was dominant, we understand, last week against Statesville. And he's going to have just a fine season. And they say he can get better. <laughs> boy, that's a scary thought. They will move Pinion, the tight end, flop him to the right side on second down. And looking for a little bit of a seam near the 40-yard line is Garrett. So it brings up our first third down situation of the game. And we, we mentioned, Randy, that South Rowan coming in here with some confidence after the way they played. They absolutely hammered East Rowan, then won an overtime, double overtime thriller against West Rowan a week ago. And you don't want to go three and out rolling in here with a lot of confidence, so a key early play. They will break the huddle and split wide to the near side of the field. The lone wide receiver is Patrick Price. And they break the ball. Here's Childers looking. Eludes one man and will be close depending on the spot. Basinger initially there for the wonder defense. But you see the quickness out of the uh, wishbone with the option there of Childers the quarterback. And that brings up one of the keys we mentioned, Randy, the Wonders staying home on defense. They did a pretty good job of it. looked like Clifford White for A.L. Brown broke into the backfield and got an arm on Childers, but wasn't able to slow him down enough to keep him from getting the first down. You see the fake handoff, backs going every which way, receivers all over the place. That wishbone makes it kind of, yeah, 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 he's trying to figure out where everybody is. <laughs> we haven't heard that one since the Central game last year. <laughs> They'll have a wing back set up. Now they will run the man in motion. Here's Childers down the line. He'll keep it. Ooh. Hit and stopped after about a two-yard gain near the 45-yard line. Looked to be Jason Brown, the first wonder there. Brown checks in as a 178-pound senior. We saw Kendall Turner, 54, on the defensive line break through, but turned toward the inside where the fake handoff had went, and that enabled Childers to get to the outside of him. Just shy of the Raider 45-yard line. We played a little over two minutes here in the opening series of this contest. Back to the wishbone with a receiver up top. A little mix up in the backfield. They'll track him down from behind. Duran Lipscomb, or Duran Lipscomb. Boy, that was a big bear hug. And, <laughs> and Lipscomb just widened his arms as he got to him and just kind of dove on him. He looked like Superman flying through the air. Watch him here. I got him. Oh. I did see a little bit of that cape come out from under his jersey, Woody. <laughs> he flew a couple of yards, that's for sure. A loss back to the 41. It'll bring up another third down, but this is a long one. Third, they need 11. I think the Raiders got mixed up on that play, Randy. It looked like they bumped into each other. Oh. And, uh, a little mix up there. Everybody jumped, so that 
No doubt we will cost South another five yards. Well, this is something that happened last week, uh, even though it was a, a thrilling win for the Raiders, sort of an ugly game against West Rowan last week. The game uh, turned out to where there were 22 total penalties a week ago for both teams, and that's not something that the Raiders want to get into, especially since they had picked up their first first down and looked like they had things in sync pretty well. Definitely advantage Wonder defense here on this play. Third and 16 coming up the line to make the Wonder 48-yard line. And working with two backs this time on the play fake. Childers on the roll. Lipscomb giving chase. Pass almost picked off. Had he caught that one, it would have been a touchdown. Jason Brown. But he batted it away, and it'll bring up fourth down. And limping off the field there, you see number nine, one of the intended receivers, is Woodruff. Now watch Jason Brown fly through here. You see Lipscomb giving chase, as Randy mentioned. And he almost got to that thing. And, and not much of an opportunity for Childers to really set and make a good throw that time because... As we mentioned, Lipscomb just breathing down his neck. The Wonders will send Jason Brown deep, set to receive the uh, Raider punt. Well, he's going to get the ball after all. Yes, he is. This is Robbie Basinger. And I was getting ready to brag on him. Outstanding guy with the leg. And he shanks this one off the right side. I, I wonder if Lipscomb may have gotten a hand on that one, Randy. He was awfully close. Well, the Wonders will get great field position to start their first series around inside Raider territory. We'll uh, take a look at their offensive lineup. And, of course, for A.L. Brown, along that offensive line, they have some skilled players. We'll check that out in just a moment as they're about ready to go, looks like. They'll start it at the Raider 48-yard line. Not necessarily a turnover, Woody, but definitely a breakdown in execution. And it Close enough. Exactly. One back set, and they will send one man in motion. Play fake to Caldwell. Lee passing on first down, coming back, making the reception is Allison, and he may be off to the races. 10 5, touchdown Wonders. No flags are down. Josh Lee to Allison, 48 yards, and it took the Wonders about eight seconds. Well, we mentioned in the keys to the game, fast start, Randy. It can't get much quicker than that. Now, watch Josh Lee stand in here and take the hit. He delivers a strike anyway, coming back to the ball is Allison, and then he's just zigzagging through the, the backfield, the defensive backfield, and off to the races. Allison, the six-foot junior. Then what your, the good receivers always do, come back on the football. Boy, and I mean, Josh Lee took a shot on that, stood in there and took it and fired a strike. Rollins to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Charlie Fox. And the kick is up, and it is good. We've got a timeout. 8.14 to go. Opening period here at Memorial Stadium. Wonders out top. Quick. Wonders with lightning right off the bat. Well, the stats are going to be kind of weird when you look at them. At least right now. <laughs> yeah, they certainly are. But, you know, the Wonders came in, Randy, under Coach Massey, not passing quite as much as they had under Coach Harden. And that may be a wrinkle that Coach Massey put in, thinking, well, you know, they, they've got to be thinking we're going to run first play. You know, Bruce Harden had his set play he ran for years right. and years. I mean, and they come it. right out of the box and, and roll Josh Lee out and go up top. Now the obligatory pass play always works, I guess. Anthony with his second kickoff of the game. This will be Gertie now of the 10-yard line. He gets a little seam and almost breaks it out. Out to the 32, however. On the coverage, it looked to be for the Wonders down there first. That was Kendall Turner on the tackle. Well, again, pretty decent field position for the Raiders, but they have to generate something offensively, Randy. And even if they don't score, they've got to get this field position war on the Canapolis side of the field. Good gracious, Randy, as you look at big Brad Mulkey there on the offensive line, number 78. For the Raiders, 390 pounds. Mulkey is kind of bulky, isn't he? Marcy. Out of the bow, halfback call, and up the middle, and almost breaking it out. Across midfield, though, flags are down. Gertie goes down at the Wonder 49-yard line. It was a jersey that kept him out of the end zone. The bad news for South Rowan, though, Randy, is that that flag is in the South Rowan backfield. And nice hole, nice seam, and 
just got him by the jersey. Let's see what the call is going to be. While Mulkey was the guy they ran behind. They are still discussing it. Speaking of uh, the official, we made the mention Ron Butner is the referee tonight. And it will come back. We've got Joe Suggs, the umpire. Abram Hooper is the linesman. Jim Turner is the line judge. Back judge is Mark Weber and Bob Stone is up here in the booth, the clock operator. So that's the, the guys in the stripes tonight. Well, two possessions and two illegal procedure penalties so far for the Raiders, and that's not a good sign. A little bit of jitters here for South Rowan early. However, they have shown the ability to battle back from behind as they did against West Rowan last week. Brett Sheets, 55 for the Raiders. He's at 255 but looks like a dwarf next to Mulkey over there on the offensive line. Man. First and 15, they back it up to the 26. And it will be dirty again. This time he's out to about the 32, maybe the 33 yard line. Chris Gibson stayed in on his right side on the defense to make the initial contact. And you see the problems there that the wishbone presents, Randy. They had everything looking like they were going to run right, and then you come back the other way with Gertie headed toward the left, and there's a big seam. Nick Clemency, the wide receiver, 33, checks in for the Raider bench with the play, and he'll go split to the big side of the field. I say big seam, but you see the, the speed of the Wonder defense to close it back up. Hallman is in a tight end now for the Raiders. And yeah, they'll give it to the fullback for the first time, and that's what fullbacks are supposed to do, get you those tough three, four, five yards. That David Ritchie is who we're talking about. Duran, Duran Lipscomb made the tackle. And Lipscomb, boy, we must have said his name a million times last year. He is in on almost every play. That kid just has a nose for the football, doesn't he? He certainly has. This is a, you know, you can, there's Coach Van Hoy urging his team on. This is a big play here. This is a momentum turner, I guess, stems the tide somewhat. Third, and realistically, and four. Third and four. They need to get just over the 41-yard line. Children's rolls has some room in front of him. He'll keep it. He's got the first down and then pays a heavy price in the 49-yard line. Jason Brown, we're mentioning his name quite a bit already. A great block that time, Randy, by the fullback, David Ritchie, who got the carry. Watch 42. You can't see him there, but he makes a block that enables Childers to turn the corner here, and what a lit by Brown at the end. The added dimension of the running quarterback. That's what Coach Van Hoy was telling Steve in our pregame show. Of course, if they keep getting in those third and long situations, we may have to see Tim Cook come in and air it out a little bit. They flop Hallman to the right side. Once again, one receiver down to the bottom of your screen. Now Hallman goes back to the left at the tight end. Tall sweep, penetration, breaking a tackle, and another tackle, and finally hit at the Wonder 48-yard line is Keith Garrett. It was Fernando Edwards coming up to finish him off. Now watch Brown, number five, break through here, and he almost gets Garrett, but can't quite wrap him up. Almost and Garrett ran through another tackle, yeah. Looked like a face mask there, possibility, but... That was a tough four yards, or well, three yards. You know the old saying, Randy, if they called everything that happened on every play, we'd never have a game. We'd have more than 22 <laughs> flags, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. Second and six at the 48 yard line. They split the bone this time. And a good hole, breaking tackles and into the clear. This could be a touchdown. Keith Garrett, can he outrun him? Yes, touchdown Raiders. We're talking about a defensive struggle. This could be another track meet like last year. Yeah, we mentioned 84 points in the game a year ago. Now they look like they had him wrapped up. Seat number 54 right there. Almost had him for the Wonders. That was Kendall Turner and could not quite bring Garrett down, and he is off to the races. Randy, he's averaging about seven yards a carry, averaging over 100 yards a game, and he showed you why on that play. Looks like the Raiders are going behind a strength they may have found, the left side of their offensive line. They've uh, busted it for 48 yards on that one. Well, running over there behind uh, big number 78, Brad Monkey's like running behind a dump truck. <laughs> Greg Haas to hold, Basinger to attempt to tie this game. And nothing has been decided. It's even at seven. We've got 5.03 to go. Opening period, back with the Raider kickoff after you watch this.
Well, for the defensive purist, we hate to disappoint you. We've got two touchdowns on the board. We played a little over half a quarter. It'll be Jason Brown back deep for the Wonders. He's the deep back along with Chris Carter, number 16. Well, we saw what the Raiders are made of after giving up a quick one. The Wonders have only won one play from scrimmage. And that has got... We'll see what happens this time around. It'll be Brown at the 10. Special teams have always been special, and something special is happening right now. Look at the blocking downfield. Brown across midfield to the Raider 47-yard line. Well, that whole play kind of stopped around the 20 or 25, Randy, and suddenly Brown said, hey, nobody's hitting me. I'm going to keep going. Watch this. Yeah, he hadn't heard a whistle yet. Everything will kind of clog up right around in here, and it seems like everybody stops for a moment, and there goes Brown. Yeah, Brown's some credit. They have some great balance there. Took two pretty good shots. Jay Phillips was the guy who finally put him on the ground. Well, you want to talk about field position. The Wonders have had it twice at the 48 of the Raiders, and they scored in one play. Now it's at the 47 of South is where they set up shop and have one back set with three receivers, and the man comes in motion this time. It'll be Caldwell on the first carry of the night for him. Ziggin and Zagan goes for about five. Let's check out the lineups now. We didn't get a chance a moment ago. The Wonders didn't give us a chance. <laughs> they went in a hurry, didn't they? And as we look for the lineups here, Josh Lee moved into the quarterback role last year. You remember he was a linebacker and then came on late in the season. To they need the Raider 37-yard line. Lee will keep it. And I don't think he's been on where the spot it. He got close, but I don't believe he had enough for the first down. But the linesman gave him a pretty good spot. Well, Randy Rigsby, the defensive end, came right out of his helmet on that play. I think this was a busted play, Randy. No, it wasn't. That was intended. I thought maybe that was a missed exchange. But look, see Rigsby back there? His helmet was lying on the ground, and he couldn't find it for a minute. Rigsby's the one that kind of turned the, turned it sour for the Wonders as he got in there with some penetration. There is a... Uh, we can almost call him Coach Lee. He is so multi-talented, and he's a nice guy, too. Yeah, and, and as a linebacker a year ago, Randy, 137 tackles and four interceptions. And you recall last year, he went both ways toward the end of the season there, and he really did a great job. In the Northwest game we talked about, he did about everything except drive the bus home that night. Yeah, because he kicked, too, didn't he? Exactly. Well, there you see it. About that far. Mm -hmm. And... The decision has been made. The lead stays in. Of course, he. this could be the old play where you get up to the line and try to draw them off sides. Well, we'll see. I think if I, think if I was going to bet, I might bet on Josh Lee keeping it because we mentioned that he got hit when he threw the touchdown pass a while ago for a quarterback in high school. Josh Lee is pretty good size, Randy. I mean, he comes in, what, 6'3", 210 pounds, and he's linebacker size, so, you know, little defensive backs bounce off him like BBs, and he ought to be able to sneak for a foot. Well, you see what the defense is. He looks like he may be checking off here. Let's see. Well, he says, I got it under control, and he did. He got two yards on a first down. Aaliyah bigger than a lot of high school linebackers <laughs> you're going to see hitting him this he, year. He is a load, no doubt, and just a fine athlete. Look at there, nice surge by the Wonder offensive line, particularly up front, led by number 52, Josh Barrier. 6'5", 220, pretty good target if you want to run behind somebody. Of course, not quite as big as that Andy Sullivan guy we saw last week at Mount. He's an all-state candidate. First down from the 36, and to get to Caldwell, he'll dive for about four off the left side. And this is kind of the style of play we were used to seeing from Kings Mountain for the past few years, where Coach Massey came from. And Lee will go over to him to get the play. Well, you're right. I know Ron just probably come out with a pass play because they said there's no way the Raiders are expecting us to throw on first down. <laughs> first play of the game, no yeah. less. Had some heavy rains here earlier in the afternoon, but so far it doesn't look like it's hurt the field at all. Here's Lee, fakes the pitch, keeps it, cuts it up to the 29-yard line. Over there, Jimmy Propes defensively for South Rowan as the clock nears the two-minute mark here in the first period. Take a look again. Fake, fake pitch right in there. You couldn't quite see it, but it bought him an extra step. Well, Lee carried the ball about... 
eight, nine times in last week's game against Statesville. And as he said, he's pretty good to, pretty good load to bring down once he gets the, the head of steam up. Key third down play for the Raider defense. Get away, Caldwell. He'll have the first down, I believe. We'll just wait and see. Near the 26-yard line. Guess who? Jimmy Probst over there again. Jimmy is having a highlight reel here in the first quarter. Sure is. And right here, Caldwell just kind of follows his blockers. And I don't know, Randy. I think they're going to mark it a little short. Well, if you go for it on fourth and a foot while ago, what's changed? Because now you're about nine yards closer. Yeah. Rush Roberts with some distance as far as his field goal accuracy is concerned, but they need a few more. We have got a timeout call by the Wonders. They want to talk it over on fourth and a foot. 113 remaining opening period at Memorial Stadium. Randy Willie along with Woody King, Steve Ganton, the entire Metro 7 crew. And we've got sevens on the board. Sevens are wild tonight. Well, they went with Lee last time. Let's see if they stick with him again. They've got three receivers to kind of spread things out and give him some room. Actually, you got four receivers. Yep. And Caldwell, the long setback. Here's the line, uh, the option. Trying to get around the corner, and the Raiders have stopped, I believe. What a great defensive play. Anthony Ryan fought off the blockers. Came in and just uh, zapped him. Well, it looks like the Wonder defense is coming on the field. They don't think they got it, but the official's asking for a measurement. You see Coach Massey not too thrilled about that development, but I believe he's going to be about a foot short. Good pursuit by Ryan on the defensive line. He batted down a pass to end the game, the overtime game against West Rowan a week ago, and more heroics here when the Wonders were driving down the field. Let's see. I think you're right, Randy. Stranger things have happened to that chain as it made its travels across the field. He, boy, he may have gained a, a few inches, but that's about it. Well, that has got to be a huge psychological advantage now for the Raider defense, who had some question marks when the year began. Well, they've got a lot of young players. Coach Van Hoy said we're younger, but we're faster and a little more athletic, and they showed that there on that play. Good pursuit because Caldwell is one of the faster backs around. Tim Cook makes his entrance into the ball game for the first time tonight, and now the Raiders, will, we've looked at that wishbone. They'll give us still a wishbone set, but a little added passing, perhaps. But the luxury of having two quarterbacks, it's never a problem, <laughs> I wouldn't think. yard line and not much else for Keith Garrett. Garrett and Gertie are just doing the job. Clifford White over there for the Wonders with the tackle. By already coming into this game, Randy, they've uh, between them got like 370 yards, so they are flat getting the job done. And last week, Gertie got 25 carries, Garrett had 29. 30 seconds to go, first quarter. Cook on the end around. Here goes Garrett. He's got some room. They track him down from behind, wrestling to the ground, but not before he gets near the 36, 37 yard line. Gonna be shy of the first down. You saw a little explosiveness once he got into the open field. Here we see it again. Watch 54 right here, Randy. This is a key. Look at him blocking two guys. That's Brett Sheets, and he did a great job to enable his back to turn the corner that time and get out to the first down. Well, I, you know, I'm glad I did. They probably glad I didn't listen to me marking the ball. I thought it was a little short, but uh, they will move the sticks. And that will be it in the first period. The 2000 meeting between South Rowan and A.L. Brown. Nothing has been decided, as we said. It's all knotted at seven. break the huddle first play of the second period here at Memorial Stadium from the 37-yard line and it will be Gertie for the neck 
stiffened all that one. He was popped pretty good. Charlie Fox out to make the hit, but a good gain of about four, maybe five, out across the 43-yard line for South Lohan. And again, that misdirection problem that the wishbone creates for you. The Wonders doing a pretty good job of staying home, but the Raiders picking up some pretty decent yardage on just about every play. Early in the game, Kannapolis was getting into the secondary, or in the uh, South Ram backfield pretty easily, but right now the Raiders look like they've got it turned around. Cam Cook directing things for the Raider offensive scheme right now as he lines up Hallman. Well, he, Hallman's just going back and forth over there. <laughs> He's going to be tired before they snap it. Oh, going nowhere. <laughs> it's the Raiders running back. Chad Keller came in and almost got the ball before Gertie got the exchange. And then uh, Lips come over there to finish it off. Watch 79 right there. He was just going through, guys. He grabbed somebody else and said, does he have the ball? No, I'll throw him away and find out who does. That's scary. That number looks big on Keller. 6'2", 221. Well, we probably are going to see the second pass of the game for the Raiders here. They face 37 at their own 40-yard line. And Kannapolis has a ferocious pass rush. Cook sees Lipscomb, gets away. Now pressure backside, throws. It's going to be picked. Coming back the other way for the Wonders, this is D'Angelo Collins, and he will return it near the 36-yard line. Pressure caused that interception, Woody. It sure did, and Cook might have been better served, Randy, just to fire that ball out of bounds in the general vicinity of one of his receivers instead of trying to make the play. But Lipscomb really was a guy who broke the play down. They couldn't get him blocked, and then Cook was just basically running for his life. D'Angelo Collins with the interception, as I said. He also returned a fumble in last week's opening game, 38 yards, so he's Mr. Turnover. And the Wonders, as we mentioned, generated six a week ago. Toss. The man in motion is Carter. He's got the football. Still on his feet. About six, seven yards that time inside the Raider 30-yard line. And give some good credit to Maurice Edwards for the block. Here we go. Look at the offensive line for the Wonders. Barrier, Tuttle, Crosby, Davis, and Overcash. And then the skill players, Josh Lee moves from linebacker. Carter and Caldwell will uh, get a lot of carries each. Allison with the touchdown catch already. Anthony and Abercrombie. And we'll check out the South Rowan defense in just a moment. Anytime you can pick up seven on first down. That's that's large. Better be taking your offensive line out the lunch. Pass, slant, complete. This is Allison again, and he is so dangerous, it looks like after he gets the football, down to the Raider 14-yard line, first down wonders. Well, I think Mr. Lee has a favorite receiver, doesn't he? There we see uh, Probst, Ryan, Holman, and Rigsby along the South Rowan defensive front. McConaughey... Rays, Walker, Childers, Lanning, Rice, and Foy. Rice had an interception a week ago in the West Rowan game, by the way. And for the first time, coming into the game now for A.L. Brown is going to be Dale King in the backfield, number 42. First down at 10 of the 14. Going to be King with the football. Ugh. Hit after about three. And it was 53 plugging the hole. Joe Rays. And he really did plug the hole, didn't he? That was a shot. Gets tougher now inside the red zone here. Well, and, you know, people think, well, well, why should that be? You know, the offense clicks down the field. Well, it's because the defense knows they don't have as far to defend, and it kind of limits the options of the offense. You just can't run a guy off deep and, and fool them. They know you can only go so far. Here they come on the option. It will be Lee with the keeper, and a flag is down near the point of tackle at about the five-yard line. Somebody could have been guilty of a hold back there away from the tackle. Well, let's see. They may have also gotten a hold of Josh Lee's face mask as he was going down. Let's we'll see what the call. Good possibility. You never know what will happen in that scrum when guys start. <laughs> scrum? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> it's, that's it's a rugby term. No, it is a hold, Randy. You got it. Somebody was downfield doing something, and the flag just came sailing in from about 20 yards away, though. <laughs> They've got some heavy weights on those this year, it looks like this crew. That will back the Wonders up. A break for the Raiders. That looks like 15. Coach Massey wants to see exactly where they're going to be before he makes his decision. There's Bob Jacobs there. There's Smitty. Keeping some numbers on the sideline. I wonder if he's kept all those numbers he's written down over the years. Of course. He's probably got a whole library. He's got them on disc now. I don't know. He looks like a pen and paper guy to me. <laughs> Second and 11. 
Well, in motion, but they've given to Carter on the uh, little slant back. Cross block action down inside the 10. Anthony Ryan on the tackle for the Raiders, but not before they get to the 8 officially. A little bit of the same misdirection you've been seeing from the Raiders here, and Carter the beneficiary of that one. He looked like he tripped over his own man, or he might have been able to outrun Ryan to the end zone. As he comes to the sidelines, a host of players. I said, one, two, three, four, five. I understand that uh, Coach Massey played like 40 players last week trying to get, give them some depth here going to the Splatoon system. Oh, hit and stop after about three. Greg Haas. And it will depend on the spot. And watch this shot here. Watch number 14 coming into your picture right there. <sighs> that hurts. Dale King. Pretty tough guy, though. 5'5", five, five, only 163 pounds. He looks bigger than that. Well, they're going again on fourth down. There's Durant Lipscomb, number 41. 5'11", 187 pounds, senior. Boy, Lipscomb will just do anything the coaches want. Well, he, I mean, he's just a hard-nosed kid. A power eye formation, and it'll be Lee with a fake, and now Lee goes in. He's close. No signal. Very close, but it will not be a touchdown. But my goodness, Randy, did you see Josh Lee? Watch him move the pile after it looks like they've got him stopped. Right here. Look at that. The whole pile. There's about three or four guys in there, and he makes them fall his way. That's just, that's linebacker strength there. Good enough for a first down. Just inside the one yard line. You got four cracks from the foot. You got to be feeling pretty good if you're that man right there, Rod Massey. As the official has called a timeout, he will come over and discuss something with the. Uh, the head coach, and uh, maybe the players are down too far. Could have been some of the guys out of the box here, but it's like this could be a logistical problem, I think. Mean. Yeah, and now Coach Massey's communicating with his folks to tell them what the official's concerned about here. Now he's talking to somebody up in the... He looks like uh, he's talking to us. Well, hey, Ron, we, we're not... Going we didn't back. do it. Yeah, it's, it's the guys in the, <laughs> in the next next level, I think, is some of his spires. There we go. Yeah, See, we now go. He, look at Steve Gann over there. He hadn't been doing anything, but he's taking a drink already. Yeah. Steve got the Hawaiian shirt <laughs> with tonight. Did <laughs> you say it's not important? Look at this press box. Wait a minute. Now, they're, a bumper up here. they're announcing something about what the problem may have been, but at any rate, looks like they've got it straightened out. Well, the only game you'll see with more folks than this at it is the Bell game. All right. I understand that will be the fourth game, I believe, next year. Still be warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. First and goal from about a foot away. Lipscomb is in for the touchdown. Now, the Wonders take their take the lead back here in this game with 6.59 remaining in the first half. And look at him just bull his way across the line there. And he had a nice block as well right up front, just following Big Allen Overcash there, 240-pounder. And the Cannon guys down there shooting the Cannon off, they were pretty much on cue for the first home game of the year. Well, you know, it's, it's been a few months since they've gotten to work that thing out, and they opened up on the road, so this is the first time of the year. Yeah. Rollins to attempt to tack on the extra point. Low snap, but it's fielded, and Rollins kicks it into the mic. Has he got a little leg there? I think that one's good enough to get through the uprights. <laughs> One of the Raiders is hurt. He flipped over the line of scrimmage. Wonders take a seven-point lead. They'll kick it back in just a minute. And when you get in that situation, Typically what offenses will try to do is draw those defensive backs and linebackers up and then throw it over them But the Raiders continuing to run there and uh, The wonders just all over it. Bay Singer will be called on the punt. The first one went about eight yards off the side of his foot Robbie normally a, an excellent excellent kicker. Let's see what kind of foot he gets into this one uh, There's the Robbie Bay Singer we know but a return will be on Childress he mishandles it, picks it up, reverses his direction, flags are down. Childers, or excuse me, not Childers, but uh, <laughs> Jason Brown. Well, oh Lord, there's so much action going on on the field, I've got the wrong five. Jason Brown ran about 125 yards in game <laughs> six. He did, he ran all over the place, didn't he? Just trying to find a little room. Take a look at it again, he'll drop the ball and then 
There's three, four, five extra steps for the cover team, and now they're all over him, and he's got to get off to the races here. Skids to a stop there. <laughs> I said there was a flag now. That was the actual uh, guy's bean bag there where he's marking. Well, we're going to put a bean bag here where all of this mayhem started. <laughs> Joel Rays gets up a little slowly, but he runs off under his own power. It was Brad Lanning making the stop that time, but again, tremendous field position for Kannapolis. And if your defense plays great, they put your offense in that great field position, so that's what's happening. Then and it, it makes the South Moran defense feel like they've got to play with their backs against the wall all night long. Here we go, and Caldwell goes about two yards. A little bit of extracurricular activities going on down there now, but fortunately some cooler heads get in the way and settle things down before the officials can draw the flags. Well, senior leadership perhaps out there said, listen, this is not going to get you anything except... Get the penalty. coaches mad at you. Yeah. You're not going to like it. Nope. That's one of those deals where you start running laps the following week in practice. Gain of two from the 37-yard line, second down. And they will give it this time to Carter. He's got some room. Carter breaking out. Touchdown. There's the uh, too much celebration penalty. <laughs> I think maybe that dive got in that, Randy, but what excellent balance. Watch Carter get hit by a couple of guys and somehow find a way to keep his balance right there. Now, I think this right here is what got him the penalty. I think that's a no-no. Well, the officiating book for 2000 it is. But I guess the Wonders will take a five-yard penalty for that in exchange for six points all day long, wouldn't you? Yeah, and it is an unsportsmanlike call against Kannapolis, and this will back Rollins up a few extra yards, but no big deal, at least right now, but I'm sure the coaches will be getting on Carter a little bit about that, but man, what a great job he did to keep his balance. 37 yards, and it showed the wonders a little bit of uh, diversity as far as the misdirection is concerned. So Josh Lee with a, with a good job directing the offense out of that particular set. Wow, this is going to be a little bit low. It's, oh, it's not the 5, it's the 15. 15, so that pick of the 18, that be a 25, they put the T down. 35-yard extra point attempt. <laughs> Rollins has kicked a 34 and 28-yard field goal this year. But unfortunately, he'll only get one point on this one, <laughs> and it'll be his longest. Snap a kick in there. <laughs> I thought it might have been outside, but the slider hooked in, caught the outside corner of the plate. 3.51 to go before halftime. Wonders extend their lead to 14. Well, we talk about Caldwell with the Wonder backfield with that one back set, but I think the Raiders kind of haven't been handled a little surprise in the running of Chris Carter tonight, and uh, the junior has uh, responded well. That's the second time they faked it left and come back right with Carter, but that time he really made the most of it. Michael Anthony taking it away, and we'll go to Gertie, this time at the eight-yard line. Looking for the one. Oh, boy, there was a block. My now goodness. Gertie's off to the races. He's got one man to beat. Can he outrun the secondary? No. There's a late flag. Probably a face mask across midfield. Gertie came within a half a foot of breaking that one all the way. Well, they didn't catch him from behind per se, Randy. One guy had the angle on him and slowed him up enough until the rest could get there. But a great block by Garrett. You just saw at the corner of your picture there. Right there, the angle by Charlie Fox enabled the pursuit to catch up because Charlie had turned around and started to run the other way he just had a good angle on him and let's see what the call is going to be this would be a, a tremendous break for South Moran to get their best field position and get back in the game and you're right it is the face mask uh, Charlie checked him down for an angle he's used to playing in a secondary for the Wonders and did a great job last season and it's he saved the touchdown there it will be Childers in to direct the Raider offense and just like that and we still have plenty of time here in the first half the Raiders will set up their offense at the Wonder just inside the 42-yard line. Well, South Moran showed last week they can play a gut-check game. They're down two touchdowns here, and they 
desperately need to get some more points before halftime. They've gotten a break. They need to take advantage of it right now. They work it out of the bone with a receiver to the bottom of your screen. Childress looks over the wonder defense. Halfback will get the call. And a little bit of a C. Turning, and a flag is down at the point of tackle. Look to be the Wonders guilty of another face mask. That time against, uh, well, Keith Garrett was the recipient. Well, you know, Garrett and Gertie do a lot of the same things, and I'm sure Garrett said, well, if my partner got a face mask, I need to get me one. Yeah, I know. They're probably going to even, you know, even it out by the end of the year. It will be from the point of infraction. They'll tack that penalty. Had a nice hole that time on the right side of the Raider line. Watch it, you'll be able to pick it up here. Nice fake up the middle, draws the defense, and right there. Looked like Lipscomb reached in as he was going by. And obviously not intentional, but unfortunately, you, you go for he that running just, back. and Yeah, it just happened to be his hands got tangled up in the face mask. And boy, this one's going to be the 15-yarder. And the Raiders are in biz, folks. Down to the Canapolis 40, or excuse me, 21-yard line with 329 first half. Boy, the, the and they don't have to get it any by. hurry. Yeah, that's right. They, they would like to chew up some clock here and not leave much for the Wonders. Well, two big penalties and a long run back, and suddenly the Raiders are in business. And they're going to give it to the big fullback. That is uh, David Ritchie. And he rumbles. <laughs> he did that time, that's for sure. 205 pounds. Gets to the Canapolis 17-yard line. And give credit for Brett Lloyd, number 71. 6'1", 260-pound senior. Nice block there on the left side to give us back some room for Richie. There's the down line shot. We're almost in the trenches here. Second down. And Childers will keep it. Trying to get outside, and they ride him out of bounds across the far way near the 15-yard line. That will stop the clock. More importantly, at 2.41 remaining first half, the Raiders now will face third down. Now watch this. Childers has some speed, Randy, but that's some pretty good pursuit there. The, the Wonders have some speed of their own, and for a quick guy like Childers to only get a yard or two out of a play like that, is a testament to how fast this Canapolis defense is. You now the Wonders might obviously have a little bit more quickness, but the Raiders are quicker than they have been in recent years, too. Third down and five. Gertie cuts it up and will have the first down, I believe. He had to get just inside right at the 11-yard line, depending on the spot. I think they have it, Lee. Start it right, come back left, and how does Gertie get through here, Randy? Didn't look like there was any room. He just kind of turned sideways and found some daylight. It will be enough for a first down. And the thing is, they can get another first down and not a touchdown. Nose the ball just outside the 10-yard line. Two and a half minutes to go, first half. Fullback. Wow. Which he got about three. You gotta believe they're gonna be playing next to best here. He looked like a crash test dummy on that one. <laughs> I mean, he got whacked in the middle of that play. I mean, just kabang. But he still fell forward. Not like that car humpy drop. Yeah. Actually, about 200 feet. Well, that's what you want from your fullback, you know, take a lick and keep on ticking. Boy, this has got all the energy and excitement you'd expect from a, a big rivalry game. At the seven yard line. They break the bone, single set. Here we go with a little wing back action. And inside the five, spinning down to about the three yard line go the Raiders. Charlie Fox, the first guy to hit Garrett. Garrett uh, lost his jersey in the process. Again, they fake left, come back right, and there's some room. And South Durant has been very, very effective with that misdirection all night long. Third down, they it's just outside the three yard line. They can't get a first down. And not a touchdown, but right now the Raiders have got six points on their line here. And if you're South Duran, you've got to be thinking two plays. Childers. Hands off to Garrett. He stopped for a loss. Lipscomb and teammates. 
awry quickly. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage or even picked up a foot or so, but hardly anything. They're going to give him about a foot. And this time, it just didn't work. The, the wonders were all over it. It looks like South Rand's taking a timeout. One of those big decisions in every game about to be made. 43 seconds remaining in the first half. We'll return in just a moment. One of the four or five key things that happens in every game, this is definitely big. Fourth down and three yards to go, just outside the three-yard line. The Raiders are down to it. And it's crucial that they get points here, Randy, because 43 seconds to go in the half, and Kannapolis gets it first coming out of the locker room. Gertie and Richie are behind shoulders. He rolls left. He'll puff the pass. Touchdown. Complete to Keith Garrett. And a flag is down. So hold everything. This one may be coming back. There may have been a hold over there on that side, on the left side. They are discussing it. And now our referee, Ron Butner, will make the call. Offensive pass interference looks like the call against the Raiders. Somebody pushed off to get the advantage, maybe. Let's see if we can pick it up here while the ball's in the air. Oh, I think it's right there. I think you got that block down yeah. there on uh, on 17 is what they're calling. Brandon Yao was just taking one of the Wonder defensive backs out of the picture, and now the Raiders will in all likelihood have to go for the field goal to get something out of this. Yeah, they, if you're a South Carolina, you know, now Coach Van Hoyle wants a little explanation there. He says, okay, all right. with the penalty, and actually, they lose the down, I think. Oh, uh, you're right. You're right. So the ball now goes over to Kannapolis. What a huge penalty that was. That took seven points off the board, so mark that down. That one might come back. And the, the you don't really know, but it didn't look like that block would have made a difference on the play because the defensive back was several steps away, and it may not have made a difference. Timeout has been called with 35 seconds to go first half. We'll step away. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. The Wonders enjoying a 14-point halftime cushion. And we're just a few minutes away from the second half kickoff. It'll give us a chance to look at some uh, numbers and do a little analyzing here. Well, a couple of things will jump out at you here. You see first downs fairly even. South Rand doing a good job uh, on the ground with the ball, but only three passing yards. Uh, they did not uh, do well there. And then the one uh, pass interference penalty that really wiped them out of a possible score. 130 to 150 total yards last week. Annapolis held Statesville to 153 yards for the whole game. The one big turnover for the Raiders led directly to a score for Kannapolis and penalties relatively even, although the South Iran penalty had to hurt worse than any of the Wonders got uh, coming down. Two of those were on that same drive by Kannapolis when South Iran was moving toward uh, their would have been touchdown, but uh, the interference penalty pulled that back out. And uh, at the first part of the game, before the game, we had some keys. Pass protection, a key for South Moran. They've done pretty well with that, although they haven't tried to throw it very much at all tonight. Ball control, they've done a good job of keeping the ball and keeping it on the ground, rolling up 127 yards on the ground. For Kannapolis, fast start, well, they couldn't have done much better. The first play from scrimmage went all the way, and the defense must stay at home. We, we saw them start uh, off a little having a little trouble with that wishbone. Then they kind of settled down a little bit, but toward the end of the first half, the Raiders looked like they had it back in gear. A game of adjustments at halftime. I know uh, Ron Massey and uh, Coach Rick Van Hoy and their coaching staffs have probably made some from what the, the guys up top uh, have told them, they've uh, pointed out. So uh, the big play's probably still going to be here. Special teams, uh, we've had a couple, uh, well, pretty good execution by both teams tonight and uh, several that could have gone the distance. A couple nice runs indeed, but to me, those two big plays, the pass interference penalty on the offense and then the uh, the interception that Kannapolis got and turned it into a touchdown after a few plays were the, the big stories so far in the first half. Just a... A tremendous swing there, and, and it's equally or even more devastating for South Moran because Kannapolis is going to get the ball first here to start off the second half. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal for South Moran had they not scored and then been the ones to get the ball back. As you see, Josh Lee and Eric Caldwell warming up on the sidelines there getting set. 
But, you know, South Perrin doesn't score. The clock runs out, and they come back and get the ball right away to start the second half. Well, it's not that big of a, a turnaround as it is now that they've got to give the ball right back to the Wonders and have nothing to show for it. I'm sitting here chuckling, thinking about what Ron Massey had told Steve before the game. He said he did, was worried about the crowd. Uh, <laughs> well, he hadn't been here very long. <laughs> Somebody didn't fill him in on this. <laughs> Robbie Basinger, end over end. Let's see who's going to take it. It will be Gerald McCray. McCray with a good wedge, and he's got some speed. Cuts it to the inside, cuts it to the outside. Trying to elude Basinger, and Robbie angles it out of bounds at the 20-yard line. There's the special teams we were talking about. And McCray had more trouble with the official than he did with the South Carolina <laughs> coverage on that one. He got tangled up with the official, and they danced for about 10 yards down the field. Let's, Watch this. Well, get out of the way. Let's give the official credit. He stayed with him pretty good. Yeah. And Basinger did the right thing. He stayed back and waited to, to take the angle. But again, Kannapolis has just had outstanding field position all night tonight. And they will kick it in here at the Raider 19-yard line. Single setback. Toss will go to Jason Brown. Trying to get around the corner, and a flag is down. Brown goes down at about the 13. And I mean, Randy, that was about a 30-yard carry on that flag. I mean, he winged it. Here we see the play again. Pretty good pursuit here, and a nice block there. The flag right at the point of tackle, so somebody, let's see, holding the call against Kannapolis, that'll back them up. So the Wonders, the second time they've gotten down here in the red zone and had a costly penalty, they were able to overcome it in the first half. Let's see if they can here. Speed does a lot of things, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. From the uh, point of the infraction, so the original line of scrimmage, keep in mind it was the 19, so they'll penalize them 10. Coach Massey's in there somewhere. Nice guy. Yeah, he is. He, we had a good time talking with him on uh, Headliners Wednesday night. And don't forget, that's every Wednesday night, live with the coaches at 8 o'clock on our new channel, 7. 7. First and 15, lead of the air going on the fly. And the intended receiver, Michael Anthony. And just let him a little bit too far. He was well covered on the play, however, by Ricky Childers. Yeah, and a good bump at the line of scrimmage to slow him up a little bit to keep him from getting there. Lee was one of two in the passing department for one touchdown in the first half. So, As we mentioned, they don't throw quite as much under Coach Massey as they did under Bruce Harden. Well, Bruce has a tough test. Citadel gets to open with Clemson. <laughs> Ouch. It doesn't matter if you open a Clemson or play them in the middle of the season. It's a tough test. We've got a timeout call by the Wonders. 11-18 to go. Third period just underway here in the second half. There's a look at some of the Wonder home crowd. Not a seat to be had for a few hours. Here we go on the reverse. All right, no, let's go this way. Flags are down. Carter finally hits the deck at about the 22-yard line. That one just uh, kind of out of sync from the beginning. And this probably will back the Wonders up again. Somebody probably moved early on that right side. Carter did the best to get back to the line of scrimmage there. but uh, and The officials are talking to the South Orang captain, so it's going to be against the Wonders. I wonder whether to take the penalty or the... They might just take the down. Well, let's see if they back them up. And then in motion. Here we go. They're going to take the yardage. Push them back. Push them back. Way back. That kind of gets them out of rush for Rollins. Yeah, that's range. I don't know. Well, that would be about a 46 yard. As... Get the race ended now. Second and 21. And it will be Lee on the carry. Down to the 25-yard line. Bump down with authority. Over there was the 81, Randy Rigsby. The 81, Randy Rigsby. The Rigsby's a guy who came out of his helmet in the first half. There are the vital numbers. Another big third down for the Wonders here. 
And this is one of those plays where if you're on the Raider defense, you say, don't let anybody get behind you. Easier said than done. They will send the speedster, Allison, wide. He'll be at the bottom of your screen. Out of the shotgun this time. Josh Lee loves this formation. Low snap, but Lee's got plenty of time. Looking, guns, got Allison. Complete first down with the extra spin move to the seven. Boy, what a strike by Josh Lee. He had all kinds of time to stand back there and let Allison run his route. Two receivers over here for Kannapolis creates a little bit of confusion for the Raider defensive backs. But, uh, boy, the third catch of the night for Allison, and it's every one of them have been exciting. And he is, without question, Josh Lee's favorite target. A lead three of four. Boy, just a, another backbreaker for the, the Raiders. Looked like they had him bottled up here, and suddenly Canapolis is right back in business. First and goal from the Sabbath. And it'll be Caldwell. Nothing much there. Rigsby over there, along with Matt Shoemaker. A senior, number 46. So we'll call it no game. Now we saw last year, Randy, Josh Lee really has a gun on those long routes. I mean, that was a strike. Now, he, that ball probably, hmm, from the middle of the field to the outside portion of the field, probably sailed 25 yards or 30 yards, maybe even on a rope. Got to give the offensive line, give him some protection. Here's a little flare out on the left. It's complete. One juke and to the end zone. No signal. He'll be in there. Touchdown. The catch made by Chris Carter. For that time, Randy, Allison threw the key block to get him into the end zone. Watch number 22 here, right there. That block was the one that enabled Carter to get into the end zone. And it looked to be Garrett missing a tackle at about the five, but Carter had already uh, made that little juke move on him and uh, dove to the corner. Now Robbins to try to go four or four in the extra point department tonight. And that one's up on the bank. 9-18 remaining, third period. Wonders have tacked on another one. They lead it by 21. But keep in mind, Kannapolis has one of the better pass rushes around. Statesville absolutely couldn't handle them a week ago. And Basinger, number 75, had two sacks a week ago. The Raiders will have Nick Clemency as the long wide receiver to the top. First down from their own 45-yard line. And up the middle, Garrett lost the football, and I think that was filling it. Yep, nothing but green shirts there. Getting up off the bottom was uh, that guy, Jason Brown. No, excuse me, uh, Gerald McCray. Well, another key turnover at a time when the Raiders looked like they had things going their way and the ball just was absolutely stripped as Garrett tried to cross the line of scrimmage and again, the Wonders have field position. New quarterback. Maurice Edwards, the backup, is in now getting some, uh, some reps here with four and a half to go in the third period. And he'll hand it off to Caldwell. That's a hard move. Eric just can't get away. Good play, coming in with penetration, Anthony Ryan. Well, that was a nice job there by Ryan to break through. Watch this. He, he knocked down two guys. And he got uh, Edwards <laughs> as well. well. Coach Massey's playing them all, I tell you. Well, that's, that's how you build a program. You get some guys with some experience who don't have that deer in the headlights look when they have to go all the time next year. There's Edwards down the line, options out. This guy can hold it. Jason Brown breaks away, breaks away, still in bounds. Flags are down, and Brown is in the end zone. And Carter looks to be shaken up for the Wonders as well, but he's up on his feet now. What's this round up? Nice pitch. Looked like he was down. He's definitely down. <laughs> Man, what balance. Joe Bickerstaff. So that will come back. And the Wonders 
Starting to pile up quite a few penalties now. Well, you got some new faces in there, too, Woody. Yep. Uh, not only in the backfield, but on the offensive line. I think they got bigger staff for holding. And I don't think they're going to uh, coach Massey next week. Somebody tries to tell them, yeah, but coach, we had a bunch of new guys in there. I don't think he'll accept that answer. No, because you might be that backup guy, and you, you got to be ready to go in at any time, and you might be the first string guy on the next play. Before you know it. Well, the penalty, we're back about where we started, back to the 49-yard line. Edwards, only a sophomore. As a matter of fact, he is the only sophomore on the depth chart. So he's got the rest of the team, juniors and seniors, so pretty good talent out there. Oh. Boy, the Raiders almost came up with it, but goodness gracious, talk about thrown to the wolves. Maurice Edwards just took a pounding on that play. I mean, here, watch this. Pow, pow, ugh. Sharp, speeding frenzy. Well, they were diving at him from all angles there, and he was just trying to get back to the ball. Look, look at his jerseys all sideways, and he's gonna be shredded before he gets out of there. Yep. Welcome to the war, sophomore. Now they will flood the field with four receivers. Slips as he comes back from center. Edwards just can't get loose. Raiders too quick. Just too quick laterally down the defensive line. Anthony been, he's a senior, has been kicking that ball in the backyard or wherever he can kick a football for years and been practicing that. And that's he said, yeah, that's the way I do it all the time. <laughs> Tim Cook comes in to direct things at uh, for the Raiders on offense this series with 2.09 to go. Final score will not really indicate the closeness of, the, of this contest. South trying to get a little running room, and they do out near the 10 yard line. Keep in mind it was 21 to 7, and a penalty cost the Raiders right before halftime, taking some points off the board. They had the touchdown. Boy, nice seam that time right up the middle. For, uh, I think that's Michael Arnett. Raiders with some new faces in on offense as well. Arnett, a 155-pound senior. Cook gives it to the fullback. Held it there for a minute. That was your uh, I think some belly play there, belly flop play. You know, Forrest Hill's famous for that. You remember the quarterback they had a couple of years ago we went out there yeah. game? He would just hold that ball and hold it as long as he could. You never knew who it was going to happen. Look like Simon's twins going out the field. That's Marlon Chambers who got the carry that time. Clock continues to roll as we close in on a minute to go. And a good move by Coach Van Hoy giving Garrett and Gertie a little bit of a rest. Those guys are going to live to fight another day. And they still have a few games left before they even enter the Central Piedmont Conference Wars. I think I saw uh, Salisbury next week at Northwest Cabarrus. And you got four or five games under your belt before you get into the conference play. You really can find out and find two things. This one tip incomplete. We'll stop the clock with 45 seconds to go. Daniel Hallman was a the guy they were trying to hit. There you see him. You know, Stay out to the 
19 yard line. a hard-fought victory over our tribal South Rowan tonight, and they win it 28-7, to having put just one touchdown on the board here in the second half and holding the Raiders scoreless for the final two chapters. We'll be back with a look at some numbers and a chat with head coach Ron Massey after you watch this. There you see the final score. The Wonders go to 2-0 and here in this 2000 season. Let's go field side. Here's Woody Kane right now. Okay, thanks, Randy. Well, Coach Massey, it started out like it was going to be a shootout, but then your team settled down and made the plays when they had to. Well, they did. Uh, you know, started out uh, a little shaky defensively, but our defense made some big plays again like they did last week, and we've got that type of defense. Uh, you know, we're getting better, uh, and uh, they're, they're good physical. They're going to try to establish the ground game, and they, they were hurting us with a couple formations early and, and a little trap early, but I thought our defense reacted well, made big plays, and, and offense stuck it in when we could. And uh, we got ugly in the second half offensively, but we're trying to establish and play a lot of people and, and do some things that we really wanted to do and, and you know, make, you know, I, I think, you know, all those holding penalties, not real happy about that, but we'll get better. We thought one of the big keys all night was that you guys just had excellent field position the whole game. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought our special teams did a great job tonight. Uh, Michael did a great job of kicking off punting, uh, except for the one kickoff return. We let him pump them up with adrenaline, but then our defense held them after that. So, you know, uh, that's a great job by our defense. But I thought our special teams did an excellent job covering and, and uh, kicking the ball and those types of things. Well, Coach, congratulations on a fine win, and then next week, Sun Valley. Yeah, uh, it doesn't get any easier. It gets, keeps getting harder, and... Uh, yeah, we got to uh, lick some wounds and come back Monday and get ready for Sun Valley. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Okay, let's go back upstairs to Randy. Okay, thanks, Woody. And let's look at some final numbers there. You see South Carolina, obviously, with the uh, advantage in first downs, but Canapolis scored very quickly on some of the long runs in the big plays. So overall, though, uh, rushing-wise, Canapolis... Uh, you know, pretty close to the south. Passing yardage, really negligible for both teams. But the, the big big bugaboo here is the four turnovers for South Rowan, and that opened the door for the Wonders. Canapolis, obviously, Coach Massey talking about penalties. Well, uh, those will take care of themselves, hopefully, in time. Anyway, the Wonders uh, winning it tonight, 28-7. to We're going to get out of here. Hope you'll join us Wednesday night for Headliners Live, as we'll have Mount Pleasant and Albemarle. 8 o'clock in our studio. For Steve Gant, Woody Kane, and the entire Metro 7 crew, thanks for being with us.